In this video, I want to give you a quick overview of my CyberDeck and how I use it. At the lower rear section, I have installed a Latiponda Sigma SBC connected to two USB hubs to which almost all devices are attached. Exceptions are two Wi-Fi adapters and a USB SSD located behind the computer. The Wi-Fi adapters are connected directly to the Sigma's USB 2.0 ports, even though they are USB 3.0 devices. This is because USB 3.0 can cause interference over a wide range of frequencies, including the Wi-Fi band. The SSD, however, uses USB 3.2 Gen 2, which, thanks to improvements in the specifications, reduces this issue. The same goes for the two USB hubs that operate with USB 3.2 Gen 2. Here, there's another Wi-Fi adopter from Alpha Network with its casing removed, an SDR Hacker one, and a USRB 205 Mini. At the front, I've installed a GPS DO paired with the B205 Mini, useful for operating on cellular networks, and another SDR, the AirSpy Mini. This is an active wideband antenna paired with the SDR that features an always-on bias T necessary for the antenna's operation. Here is a GPS receiver that I mainly use for war driving. I've installed Proxmox on the computer inside the backpack, a virtualization software based on KVM with a convenient web interface that I access from another device since there's no display or keyboard installed here. I connect remotely via the Wi-Fi of the router inside the backpack, whose antennas are here. Let's power everything up. The first power bank supplies the fans and the router. It has a constant discharge rate and therefore a predictable duration and it's always the last to deplete to avoid losing access to the computer or exceeding temperature limits. The second power bank powers the USB hubs and connected devices. The duration of this power bank is variable. If it depletes before the two power banks powering the computer, there will be no interruption in device operation because they will be powered directly by the computer. The Latte Panda Sigma has two power inputs. The discharge rates won't be equal for the two power banks, but when one runs out, the system continues to operate smoothly, drawing power from the other. Now I'm connecting via my laptop, but when I'm away from home, I use this mini computer for convenience. It fits into a waste bag or even a pants pocket. I've also tested with a smartphone and tablet. Each method has its advantages and disadvantages, but with some practice, you can manage everything even with these devices. I enter the password to unlock the encrypted disk. In a few seconds, the system is ready and I can access the Proxmox web interface. The network is configured as follows. The router has a WireGuard VPN client on one LAN port and direct internet access on the second LAN port. I've connected a cable to the router's WAN port. Stored in the side pocket of the backpack, this WAN port can easily be converted into a LAN port if, for example, I prefer not to use Wi-Fi to connect to the system. I have a virtual machine with PFSense, to which I've dedicated one of the computer's two LAN ports, connected to the router's LAN port with direct internet access. Connected to PFSense, I have a Samba server, a Hunix Gateway virtual machine to access the internet via the Tor network, bypassing the VPN that would otherwise slow things down, and another virtual machine that acts as a Wi-Fi hotspot for internet access through Tor network, which I mainly use for my smartphone. I've assigned the M2 Wi-Fi module installed on the computer to this access point with antennas positioned here. I've assigned the USB SSD to the Samba server using PCI pass-through of the entire USB controller to which the drive is connected to achieve maximum performance. This disk is also encrypted and it unlocks automatically using a key present on the server. Having this shared storage space among all virtual machines makes it easy to transfer files to and from the computer or smartphone I'm using to connect to Proxmox. 
as well as providing ample storage space for recording long sessions with the SDRs. The virtual machines at the top of the list are templates already pre-configured with my preferred settings to avoid repeating the entire process every time I create a new one. I have some virtual machines dedicated to single devices and others to groups of devices, like the one for war driving. I find it convenient to have separate environments for specific tasks, even if it's not the most resource-efficient method. All USB devices are assigned to the VMs normally. I've never had operational issues with this method. However, if I want to use the SDRB205 Mini this way, there are limitations. I can't exceed 6 MHz of bandwidth without starting to lose samples. To fully utilize this SDR, I assign the entire USB controller to which the hubs are connected. One of the conveniences of using Proxmox is that, being managed through a web interface, I can assign the processor's integrated GPU to a virtual machine and connect to it using software like RealVNC or NaMachine which are more efficient and smoother compared to SPICE. Besides Proxmox, there's another system installed, Ubuntu on a second drive mounted on the computer. I change the boot order from the currently running system by issuing a command in the terminal. This was just a quick presentation of how I use this setup. I'll make more videos on the operation of individual devices. If you'd like to see something specific, please let me know in the comments.